Hey everybody, welcome back to Kerbal Space Program. Um, not gonna be going to space today, but this is the redesigned version of my first successful aircraft. Is the X1A, I'm calling it. I doubled the number of intakes to hopefully get some more air going. I also put an aerospike engine on this with some rocket fuel so that it can uh, go hopefully into space at some point. We're not going to space right now, but that did actually balance things up a lot nicer too, which is pretty sweet. But uh, we're not going to space right now. We have a rover to rescue. If you might remember in the last episode, uh, my rover came down a little bit hard up at the pole and it's trapped with a flat tire. So, uh, what the heck just happened there? Okay, it's just loading the physics. It's okay. But um, let's go ahead and turn off those engines, turn these ones on, give it a little bit of thrust here. So yeah, this is going to be a, a mech jeb enabled plane now because... I don't want to fly it all that way on my own. I don't want to pay attention. So what I'm going to do is just have Mech Jeb keep my heading and my speed going. Um, that way, well, I think it, I think it will keep my speed and my um, altitude going. That way I won't stall out when I'm not paying attention. It's the main reason I want to have that. Oh, dear God. Come on. I thought I had that rocket turned off. Let's turn keep that off. Needed a little bit of the extra boost there at the end, so I'm glad I accidentally turned that on, but let's pull up a little bit faster here, get a little aggressive. I need my resources up so I can actually see what's going on with the air intakes and whatnot, but my main goal here is just to get on the correct heading pretty quick, get some altitude going first of all. This thing seems to fly a whole lot better now. Let's just do this. Why even screw around? Oh god, I shouldn't have screwed around. <laughs> okay, we're okay. We're okay. Let's straighten out. Straighten out. Alright, I think we're on the straight and narrow now, so... I will meet you guys on route. If anything interesting happens, I will definitely illustrate it. I might test the upper performance limits of this thing, just because I'm kind of curious what we can get her to do so uh, I'll meet you guys at a higher altitude let's see what we can do we can screw around with this thing a little bit what's the point of taking out my fancy new space plane if I don't even uh, test the push the boundaries just a little bit with it basically I'm just gonna climb right now and see what kinda air intake stuff we get going here if I'm crafty about it and get good speed going up we might actually be able to get some pretty serious altitude out of this I gotta remember my action groups here three will kick in the rocket one will shut down the main engines here so I'm just gonna see what happens if we do this we're picking up some decent speed air is starting to really go down alright let's get ready with the rocket here actually I think I wanna pick up more surface speed first don't I uh, fingers crossed. Switch over. Now. See what happens here. We are definitely losing some speed. How much fuel do I have for that? It's the oxidizer, really, that's going to be the problem with the, uh, the aero spike. I think I needed to pick up more speed before I did that. This might be a faster flight this time, though. I'll tell you that much. Let's just see what we can do with the oxidizer. I think I needed to take a little bit more gentle of an approach and build up some more airspeed before I turn on the rocket, probably. I'm kind of thinking that's... I should have gotten this thing up to like the 1200 or whatever meters per second that I know that it can do. I definitely want to kind of pay attention to this, make sure I don't accidentally go into orbit here, because that would be bad news. Because I don't think I'll be able to stop it if I were to do that. I need to put RCS thrusters and stuff on this thing too, but um, I doubt it's going to have enough fuel to make the return trip. This is a one-way trip very likely for my poor Kerbal here, but what are you going to do? Let's yaw over a little bit. My path of travel is kind of uh, evening out there, unfortunately, a little bit. I think more speed was definitely needed before I hit the rocket. And that rocket just ran out of oxidizer. So we are coasting 
down for a little bit here, I guess. Got to up to a decent altitude there. Almost 30,000. Yeah, so I, th I think for the next text test flight I do, I will be sure to uh, do things just a little bit different. I'm turning off the engine, opening up the air intakes again so we can start getting some air passing through this thing when we get down to better altitudes. But that was a good little test while I was doing this anyway, just to see what we could get out of it. It's good to know. And hopefully, since I have the engines turned off, we're not going to spin out here. I'm going to throttle them down to about a quarter thrust, too, so when I turn them on, they're not just blasting right away. I believe I have the intakes open, do I? Yes, I do. Alright, so our air is coming back up. Let's get the engines spooled up again here. Alright, we got thrust again. So yeah, next time I d make a trip up this way, I will definitely be sure to uh, adjust my flight profile a little bit. I'm not that experienced with space planes, but I do understand that I have to kind of take it a little bit slower. I kind of went for broke with that one, so, you know. But for the trip up there, hopefully we have enough fuel left. I kind of used a lot with that rocket. I'm going to set this thing to... Alright, I definitely need that gone because I can't read anything. Let's hold uh, 18,000 meters and we'll keep at our heading. And let's see how that That's. We want zero degrees. Like, no, no, it's doing alright. Okay, so I'll see you guys hopefully when we get there. Alright, we are coming in at a blistering speed here over the pole, so I am going to do two things here, I think. The first is turn this off and regain control of the plane myself here. 14 minute trip, that's not too bad. So what I need to be paying attention to here, A, is let's make sure the nose is pointed down so we don't end up... Uh, kind of screwing ourselves over in terms of uh, gaining too much altitude and stalling out after we make it up here. We don't need to lose Jebediah. He's he's kind of the main dude for the Kerbal Space Program pretty much. So let's get a little banking turn going here. Trying to line up my heading pretty much with that rover there. It looks like that's that's probably going to do it there. So let's straighten out and fly like that. That's probably good. Good, we lost those atmospheric effects and a lot of our speed. That's good. I'm going to have to keep switching back and forth between the map here. I don't know if I want to lose quite as much speed as I did, to be honest. Just because I'm looking at the distance there and how much fuel I have and it's a little bit of a concern so I'm gonna pull up here get a little bit of altitude and speed going again kinda waiting to see that blue line get pretty close cuz Kerbals do not walk fast so I don't wanna be walking far with him and I'm, I'm very hopeful that he's gonna be able to fix those tires cuz otherwise this is gonna be a bad day for poor Jebediah here he's gonna have a lot of walking that he's gonna have to do in the Arctic, which is not fun. And we are... This is not a bad way to travel. I just need to make one of these that's bigger so that I can uh, get and get some sort of... I don't know if Keythane would help me refuel up here at the pole. I don't know if there is any on Kerbin. Um, need to get a bigger plane going though. One maybe that can either hold more fuel and make the full trip or at least a, some sort of refueling system up here. If I got this thing into space, it probably would have been a lot more fuel efficient, but I fell a little short. Well, next flight, I will try to do a little better with that. So our blue line is getting pretty close now. Trying to not pick up too much extra altitude here gets a little confusing to navigate when you get up to the pole because this 
obviously north doesn't really mean anything when you get to the north pole and all that so kind of gets a little bit screwy up here the heading changes quite a lot what camera I want I want the free cam all right there's the base that's the rover I parked it down at the bottom of the hill so this is this is the broken rover here I think is that dead ahead here that's got to be the broken rover nice All right, how far away is it? This cam that's cuz the planet's turning. That's why this is confusing me too. Like the planet's turning, the camera's moving. All kinds of crazy business is going on down here. All right, let's start cutting thrust a little bit and lose some of this altitude here cuz it's not going to take very long before we get caught up with that at these speeds. What do we got? Well, we need a little bit more. I'm going to fly low, though. Start losing this altitude. We don't need to lose the speed as much as we need to lose the altitude at this point. Man, I'm used to... I've been driving across this in a rover going like 20 meters per second. And I got to say, it's a much better way to see the pole. more power when I get to about 10 I'm gonna pretty much cut all thrust I think and just glide in at that point we had plenty of fuel to get this done yep that is definitely the broken rover now the key also is gonna be to not break the rover worse by hitting it so I'm going to have to be careful about that. See, that's how far I've been driving crap. All the way over here. Annoying. Alright, 5,000 meters. 350 a second. This is looking okay. Got to get my... Oh god, I don't know what that noise was. That didn't sound very nice, though. Hope it wasn't anything important. I'd rather not crash here at the last second. So I can't cut the thrust all the way with this plane. I still don't think I can do that. Let's get the gear down. I'm still not real sure about cutting the thrust all the way, but when, I've, when I did it before, it just flipped out. I don't know how it would handle now. Let's yaw just a little bit over here. Nice and easy. I don't want to come in too close to it. But I also don't want to come in too far away. The balance of lift is a lot better with this plane than it used to be. So I'm feeling pretty good about things. Now we know that the ice, the top of the ice is at like 30 meters or so. 30 something meters. So that means we have like 1,600 exactly to go now. The first time I've tried to land at a specific target, really, so I'm kind of nervous and excited. I'm going to get the lights on, too, just because it's starting to get a little bit dark over... Well, I guess the sun's kind of coming up, I think, but it's still dark. The lights will probably help a little bit. All right, we're going to overshoot this target if I don't lose some altitude here, man. Get that nose down. I don't want to overshoot the target. Damn it, I'm going to overshoot the target. Engine's off. Please don't spin out. Actually, I chickened out, not engine off. Huh. Um, I guess we can kind of loop around. We'll just keep yawing in a certain... Uh, this thing yaws so slow, though. I'll have to bank a little bit. Oh, God, the engine's off. Are we gliding? It's actually successfully gliding. Nice. It couldn't do that before. Nice, nice, nice. How long of a walk am I making for myself? Where did the rover even go? 
marker's gone. Oh, there it is. All right, we just passed directly over it. I don't want to make a long walk for myself. This thing's gliding like a little too well. I kind of wish it would just get down to the ground. I guess I can drive it on the ground for a little bit. Just put the engine up just a little bit. We got plenty of fuel. We should be able to do that. How much of a stone am I dropping down though? I have to pull up at some point here just so the nose isn't angled down. I don't want the nose to hit the ground first. We're getting down to the nitty gritty now. This thing is not turning over any faster with the engines off. So we got light on the ground. Let's start pulling the nose up just a hair. There we go. That's a nice landing profile. Don't go too much though. The weight balance is going to be a little bit off because there's a lot less fuel. Man, this thing glides super nice now. Little changes, like it basically just adding those intakes in the front really made a big difference, man. Yeah, I think what I'll do is I'll just turn, I don't feel like walking four kilometers, so I think we'll turn around and try to just go under a little bit of power, cruise across the ice here. It's flat, so I'm not that worried about it breaking up or anything. All right, pulling up. And we're down, brakes on. Well, that was pretty successful. Wait for this thing to stop. All right, now how does it turn on the ground, I guess, is the other question. A little nervous about this. Does it have enough? Is this even? Yeah, it's pushing it. It's taxiing. This is going to be like the longest loop that anyone has ever done in their world though let's let's stop let's stop oh this is gonna be a terribly long loop it does not turn very good at all which is you know you'd kind of expect it's an airplane with five landing gear but come on man well we're like a, we're part of the way through the turn just keep hitting that thruster on and off. I think it's going to turn better when it's going slower, too. As long as we keep some ground speed up. Oh, my God. Can I, like, put the brakes on one wheel? Do a, a power slide in this thing? No, I can't. That'd be pretty sweet. We're going to be ditching this plane just like, oh, yep, there goes the physics loading. We're going to be ditching this plane just like I did with the other one because I have no way of uh, refueling this at this point. I haven't really developed a system for doing that. This doesn't have any docking ports or anything on it right now. So there's no way to get this thing back to Kerbal Space Center. So I'm just going to have to ditch it. All right, now let's stop the thrusting. Oh yeah, look at that, it's just telling me in meters now, that's always a good feeling. That is always a very good feeling. Let's not clip it with the wing. Now this thing was in good condition, I believe, other than that. It should be perfectly drivable. If not, Jebediah is going to be a sad, sad panda today. He looks pretty happy still though, so I think he's got a good feeling about how this the condition this rover is going to be in too. Then we'll just get to go on a nice little rover drive, and this the rover is pretty slow. It can only go 20 meters per second or so, so that's going to kind of suck, but all right, close enough. Let's leave the brake on, and EVA, I didn't put the ladder down. Get that ladder down so he can have a little bit of a dignified exit here. I love these folding parts so much. That ladder is pretty cool. The plane is really jittery. This is kind of jiggling. Yeah, the I think the SAS is still on, so it's just kind of it's just kind of jiggling. Now, where did that? Ro it's like over that away. All right, let's go check this out. Can we fix it? This is good stuff. Repair stuff already. Now this has a docking port on it so that it can plug into the base and have a nice little parking spot. Um, doesn't have any RCS or anything. Okay, can you fix this? You can fix it! 
Oh my god, we're saved. I was worried for a second, nothing seemed to be happening, but... It looks like it's gonna be good. And it's rolling away, isn't it? That's good. Can I even get this? Yeah, I can get the ladder down, good. I say, I don't even know if I can get this ladder down, because... Nobody's inside, but apparently that doesn't matter. So let's, first of all... Climb up here. Oh yeah, it has a... I don't need to do anything with this. It has a probe in it too, so... Let's not run him over. Let's just set the brake. Oh, he could ride on it. That's kind of fun. Let's just drop on down. Now... How to safely ditch this plane... Is the question, I guess. I think what I'm going to do is just kind of... Get past the rover with it and fire up the throttle get out pretty much right away last time I waited a little too long and uh, took a little bit of a spill but if I'm careful this time I think would you grab the ladder if I'm careful this time I think we'll be good so come on all right so let's go ahead turn off the brake Fire up the jet just a little bit and get it past the rover so we don't destroy the rover we came all this way for. It's weird, sometimes when you turn off the brakes, it seems like it takes a minute for anything to happen. Alright, engines off, brakes on. Alright, are you ready for this, man? This is going to be scary. Alright, hit it. Oh, God. It's going to be bad. EVA! Go! He's okay. He's okay, I think. Maybe. He didn't explode. Okay. Now, I don't know what's going to happen with that thing. It's going to get out of our physics range. I think it's more stable now, so it's probably not even going to really do anything, is it? Did it run out of fuel? Why did it stop? I guess I'm not ditching it. Well, that's too bad. I'll have to just end its flight, I guess. Wow, that thing carried me. That was going fast. Man, that carried me a long way from the rover. So anyway, I'm going to get him in the rover. We're going to drive home to the base, and I'll meet you guys when we get there. I'm so happy that the rover repair was successful. Um, this rover is kind of important because I want to try to find the... There's an anomaly up here that I want to kind of locate. I just realized that this doesn't have an ISA on it, though. Darn it! It doesn't have an ISA, but we got to do a repair up here. I think I might have to send an unmanned rover with an ISA up to scout things out first and then send this. Yeah, that's probably what we'll have to do. <sighs> Why didn't I remember to put an ISA on this? You know, it's, it's funny that I'd remember that I didn't do that now. But anyway, we got two men up here now, which is good because it's probably a little bit lonesome being up there all by yourself. What's our battery like on this thing? Pretty good pretty darn good. Let's turn off the brake so this thing can actually move. Alright, I'll see you at the base. Alright guys, well we successfully got this up to the base, so I'm gonna just park real quick here. I just park in the light, I guess. Uh, an interesting bug that happens is if you are in, it says in the vicinity of Kerbal Space Center, which I guess we're still in the vicinity of Kerbal Space Center. Solar panels have a tendency to break, so that's real nice. So hopefully that's not going to happen. Oh, I got to put down the ladder. Hopefully that's not going to happen when we actually get this thing to the moon, or that's going to be a problem because, like, we need solar power on the moon, obviously. So that's kind of annoying. I hope they get that fixed at some point soon, but what are you going to do? Anyway, let's go ahead and get good old Jebediah here inside and we got two dudes up here now now I installed a bunch of mods which I'll be dealing with in the future here um, but we're, we're gonna launch a keythane survey of uh, Kerbin just because I'm curious how that works and rather than send something all the way to the moon just yet I wanna just launch it um, here and uh, take a look and see what we got going there so in the next episode, I think we'll try to get a Keythane satellite up in orbit and uh, see what we got going on. See if we can get anything going here up at the pole. Maybe that would be a way to fix my refueling problem. 
Anyway, guys, catch you next time.